everybody that's here anyway. Good to see you in the service this morning. Good to have you uh, worshiping with us there at home. Uh, we're looking forward to making our first step back toward gathering together at Onaz in a face-to-face uh, kind of setup. On Father's Day, June 21st, we will have two duplicate services, one at 9 a.m. and one at 11. These services will be for all ages. There'll be no nursery, no children's church uh, provided. Those who are sick or at high risk, we're encouraging to stay home, continue to follow us on live stream. For those who will be in attendance, please uh, let us know which of those services that you probably will come to. Uh, We're not gonna hold you to it necessarily, but uh, give us a call here at the church, uh, 614-409-1336, or respond to the survey that we're gonna have on the app by Tuesday. And just uh, please let us know what your plans are. And just to be clear, we are not reopening any other face-to-face ministry just yet. So until we do, please continue to take advantage of our online uh, groups. Also, we're working on some informational videos. You're gonna see one of them this morning. Uh, Pastor Tony's gonna share about the children's ministries and what she's uh, doing with those in these days ahead. And you're gonna see that in just a few minutes. But uh, we'll be getting these other videos together and share with you over these next couple of weeks so everyone knows um, what to expect when they come to church and uh, so you know what we expect when you come to church. All right. Also, um, this would uh, normally have been our week for prayer and fasting, but uh, Mike was under the weather this past week, so the devotionals are gonna be postponed a week. So just be watching for those in a week from now, okay? All right, well, let's uh, watch the, the video that Tony has for us. Hello, I pray that you have been able to enjoy some of the sunshine that we've actually been able to receive these last few days. I know that we all have been dealing with a lot of rain for the last couple weeks, so it's been a nice change of pace. I know we went from winter weather straight into summer weather, it seems like, without really spring in between. So. I know that uh, if you're like me, we've got our swimming pool up and running and we're just ready for summer to be welcomed so that we can start doing some outdoor activities and get outside of the house for a little bit. But hey, as we get ready to head back into the church, I wanted to bring you up to speed on some things that's going to be available for you and your families. I wanted to let you know that Some things are just going to look a little bit different when we do get to come back. Pastor Jay is going to be making some announcements about what to expect when you come back to the church. And one of the things I wanted to um, help enlighten you about is with children. For right now, we felt it was in the best interest and health for um, our children and everybody if we just go ahead and we do more of a family style service. So what this picture looks like is take what we've done for our family Sundays on the fifth Sunday kind of situations and just imagine that and that's how we're going to be doing things for a while yes we realize that your children may get wiggly and they may get jittery they may have questions why all of this is going on but we want you to know we welcome that and we realize that they're kids and that's okay we love kids and so i know that we even sometimes have tar- hard time sitting there so we can't expect for them to sit there and be quiet for an entire hour. So one thing we're planning on doing is what we're going to do is have, I'll give like a small message for the kids each Sunday that'll last no more than 15 minutes, just so that they have something. And I'll be providing bags for them that they can pick up as they're walking into the sanctuary. And we'll have areas for families that you can gather in your little family hubs and then that way they have things that they can then work on while pastor jay does his message for the adults Um, you might want to also make sure that your children are aware about face masks some families may not have had their kids exposed to these situations so i just wanted to remind you to make sure that you pre-warn your kids about that because masks 
honestly can sometimes just be scary. I know that even with us as adults, it, it has been just completely different environment to walk into places and see these on people's faces, uh, at least for me anyways. But I want you to know uh, to, to prepare them for that. Some other things to be looking out for. We've got some exciting things ahead. Yes, summer is definitely on its way. And we have not forgot about you and your families here at Obet's Church of the Nazarene. And so we've tried to be creative and think of things that we could do with you as a church family that would still enable us to do some social distancing as we work through these crazy months and the days ahead uh, while we work through getting through this COVID situation. So one of the things that we're first working on is June 19th and 20th, we're going to have a drive-in movie night. This is open to anybody in the church. They will uh, have a registration at Obet's naz.com where you can go online and you can register your family we're going to allow up to 25 families per night so we decided to do it on friday the 19th and saturday the 20th so that we could be sure that every family that would be interested in coming has the opportunity so be looking online for that uh registration so that you can register and ahead of time to be able to come there will not be any snacks so you'll want to bring your own snacks for your family to enjoy that night. You will want to bring chairs to sit out around your car so you're not having to sit inside your car. Uh, and so we'll have a, a bathroom available that will be for emergency situations only. Uh, but we want to be able to bring everybody together. We know everybody is anxious to be able to see each other and have some time together. So we thought this would be one fun way to be able to do something. So we'll have a great big uh, movie screen out there with a movie projected up on it. We'll be parking in the front side of the church in the grass side so that the sun will be going down on the back side and we can start that way at seven and have that should have that finished up by nine o'clock. If you have any more questions, please feel free to contact me. You can catch me through uh, Pastor Tony Obetznaz at gmail.com or you can text or call me at 740-637-9877. We also have a, a virtual drive-in VBS that we will be hosting on June 23rd through the 25th. Yes, you heard me, virtual drive-in VBS. I say that because we're going to offer it as a drive-in situation for families that feel comfortable and would like to be in the presence of a group setting with still proper social distancing. You know, it's going to be done virtually so those families that aren't comfortable yet and still feel the need to be able to stay home for the protection of their family uh, with the availability. And that will be on June 23rd through the 25th from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you join us for those in the days ahead. We did send out when we went and ding dong ditched our kids because we wanted to let them know how much we love them and we miss them. If you did not get one of these letters or you were not ding dong ditched, that means we don't have your information. So if you could get online and make sure you get that out to us, we would greatly appreciate it because we're not wanting to leave anybody out during these days and times. Every family matters to us. So we want to encourage you in this time. We know that these are challenging days and we don't want you to lose sight of the fact that God is still in control. And so we want you to know you are loved, you are thought about, we are still here for you, and we are so excited for the opportunities that we're going to have to do ministry with you guys in the days ahead. Just remember, always remember that God is still on the move and we love each and every one of you and are thankful to have the opportunity to serve in ministry with you. So again, if you have any questions, please reach out, get a hold of me uh, with those numbers that I gave you, 740-637-9877, or you can reach me at Pastor Tony, T-O-N-I, just in case you don't know, uh, obetsnaz at gmail.com. You can find those on our website as well. Please feel free to give us a call if you have any questions, concerns, prayer needs, or ways that we can help you out. We love you, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of your guys' faces back at the church very soon. Have a great day, and God bless. Good morning. Uh, Obed's Church of Nazarene and everybody else that is uh, watching out there today, uh, you can tell Pastor Tony's excited. We're all excited to have everybody back 
uh, here so that we can see each other and uh, worship together. And as we come to worship today, uh, 1 John 2, 9 says, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. And this is time of Pentecost. This is the day of Pentecost. What a great day to see the power of, of God come through. And uh, we see uh, today, this last weekend, uh, the Prince of Darkness is trying to destroy uh, Pentecost weekend, but he cannot do that because he already knows the power of God and the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. He's seen it in, uh, he's seen it happen in Acts 2. So let's come together in one accord so that we can start to experience the uh, things that they did in Acts 2, the uh, power in the, in the power in the Holy Spirit and in the fire of God. So everybody, uh, Stand up and let's worship together today. Amen, everyone. We're uh, good morning. We're excited. We're almost back. So just another couple weeks, and and we get to see everybody's faces. So even those rat, uh, I'm sorry, those frogs were were excited in the video. So we're uh, we're ready. We're ready to be back here, um, ready to worship. And so uh, wherever you're at, let's stand and let's worship this morning. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside well, There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. receive it if you can feel it somebody testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify When I rise in the morning, 
Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, just give me Jesus. That I can't control. 
I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Amen. Isn't that what we want more of him? As we come to prayer today, uh, our uh, country is in a whirlwind right now. I know they've called for a na nationwide day of prayer for all the churches and pastors and, and uh, just people that love God's children that are hurting so bad right now. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've, uh, I know Thursday night, I didn't get to sleep till about 4.30 in the morning, uh, just praying and, and crying and crying out to God in anguish of uh, what the enemy was trying to do to our country. But uh, I know that God never fails and that he will always be with us. Uh, we have many in our uh, congregation that needs prayer and needs lifting up. I know Renee Robinson, she's having some tests and some blood tests done and, and uh, for situations that uh, she's going through. And, and uh, Jaquay Applin, um, uh, Jaquen uh, cut his fingers last week and he's healing. And uh, so I know the Applins need prayer. Uh, Becky Ramsey was in the hospital. Uh, she's has, having some complications, and this morning we lifted her up, and we asked that you lift her up. She was supposed to meet with a cardiologist. And Pastor Ken is still having problems uh, with his hearing, with his ears, and, and we pray over him today. And uh, we lost uh, Ken Blevins, uh, Jane Blevins, our old secretary and, and piano player that we love so much. Her husband uh, went to join her uh, today. So... Um, as we come to pray, I just um, I just know that we need to cry out to God. You know, it, it says in Second Chronicles that if His people would just cry out to Him, get on their knees, that He would heal our country, and our country needs healing right now more than it ever has. Uh, I know the enemy is trying so hard to divide and, and ununify us but the churches are stronger and I know that and I know that we can come together so that we can become uh, unified again and spread God's love and his peace around the world so bow your heads uh, Father God we just come to you today Lord Lord uh, we come to you troubled we come to you distraught uh, some of us are perplexed in the outcomings of the things that are going on. But God, we know that your hand is always at work and that you have never failed us yet. And as we come together as a nation to pray to you for healing, to pray for you for peace, to pray to you for, for uh, uh, uplifting, and Lord, justice is what they're crying, that they want justice. And God, you are all about justice. And so, Father, we want to put this into your hands today. As the marches continue to go on today, 
downtown. I ask for protection around them. I know many of my friends that are in churches are going down. Uh, many of my friends in biker ministries are, are riding down to pray over the city. And Lord, so right now, we are going to lift up the city of Columbus. We're going to lift up the city of uh, Minneapolis and, and all the other cities, Indianapolis and Georgia and all the ones that are, are Tennessee that are having so many problems, Lord. God, we know that you are a God that can do many things. And this is the time of Pentecost. And this is the time when you truly sh shown your power. And uh, Lord, I know that you can do it again. Just as the song says, you can do it again, you can do it again. And we know that you can. And Father, for that, we're just going to give you all the glory and all the praise. And we trust in you. And we depend upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, in the church said, amen. Thank you, Giles. And I agree with those prayers, prayers that our, our city, our country need. Uh, we just need to really pray against what Satan wants to do. I don't know if you realize that back in the Old Testament, there was a, a time when people felt like they could climb their way up to, to, to God, up to heaven. And they built this tower. It's called the Tower of Babel. And in the midst of that time, it just seemed like they were all turned upon themselves. They weren't, really weren't trying to reach God. They were trying to become God. And uh, in the midst of that, God said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. And that's when he confused the languages. And he separated peoples out and sent them out across the world uh, to divide and, and cover the world. And um, to me, Pentecost is an undoing of Babel. It's an amazing thing when, when the, the day of Pentecost happened and the Holy Spirit showed up in, in power with the sound of the rushing mighty wind and the tongues of fire that, that lit on each person. And then as the disciples were able to go out into the streets of Jerusalem and present the gospel, to all those people who were there from all over the known world, uh, the, the Mediterranean area, everybody that was gathered there for that, that holy day, they started hearing the word of God, the message of Jesus in their own language. So the, the barrier of language was, <laughs> was done away with. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has a way to fix the problems of our world. And I believe Pentecost is so essential for that to happen in our lives. Today we do focus on Pentecost. It was on, that, on this date, about 2,000 years ago, there in the book of Acts, 120 followers of Christ were there in that upper room in Jerusalem that's when the Holy Spirit was released upon them and the church was born. Happy birthday, church. Isn't this a, a good day to celebrate? Last Sunday we talked about the promise of Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And in Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, he said, this is it. This is the fulfillment of that promise. And also last Sunday I mentioned a, a a quote by Dr. Jerry Vines. And, I, and this, this, this quote is very captivating to me. He said, the average Christian and the average church are somewhere bogged down between Calvary, where Christ died on the cross, and Pentecost, where the, where the Holy Spirit was released. He said they've been to Calvary for pardon, forgiveness of their sins, but they've, they've not been to Pentecost for power. Bethlehem, the place where Jesus was born, he said, means God with us. Calvary, where Christ died, means God is for us. But Pentecost means God in us. 
And I asked last week, and I'll ask again today, have you experienced Pentecost in your life, the power of God being released in you? Today we're gonna talk about the purpose and the power of Pentecost. The purpose of Pentecost is all about the harvest. Another name for the day of Pentecost was the Feast of Harvest. So harvest is at the heart of Pentecost. Joel chapter two, verses 23 through 25 says, be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Two things have to happen for a grain harvest. There has to be that early, the former rains, as the scripture calls them. That rain would prepare the soil for the planting of the seed. Then there was a need for the latter rain. When the plants have already sprouted up and grown, the heads have already formed. That latter rain was necessary to help mature the crop for harvest. Joel chapter three, verse, starting verse nine, proclaim this among the nations, Be, prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of, of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pr pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. And listen to this terminology. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And verse 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Today, today is the day of salvation. Today is the, is the day of harvest, the sickle that that sharp blade that was used to, to cut down all the, the wheat so they could be bundled up and then, then threshed so it could be, the grain could be saved and the, all the husks and the straws scattered. But the grain would be gathered in to be used. Today, today we have a, a, a wonderful privilege of hearing from our Nazarene general superintendents you may not be too aware of the structure of the Church of the Nazarene, but we have districts all over the states and actually around the world. There's district superintendents. There's, there's re regional leadership in different areas of, the, of the, the, the world. But also we have six general superintendents. And we're gonna hear from them in this video right now about the purpose of Pentecost. Listen to this. We have been on a journey from Easter to Pentecost. The first Pentecost following the resurrection and ascension of Jesus is the birth of the church. The events of that day are vividly described in Acts chapter 2 and reveal the purpose of Pentecost through the powerful images of wind, fire, and tongues. Wind is descriptive of power. Fire is descriptive of purity. But it was not power for the sake of power or purity for the sake of purity. It was power and purity given to do something. That purpose is revealed in the image of tongues. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit 
and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The last words Jesus said to his first disciples are known as the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. This comes to us from Matthew 28, 19 through 20. But how were they going to do that? They did not have the power, courage, or passion for that assignment. They needed something they did not have to fulfill the missionary mandate given by Jesus. They needed a gift. And so Jesus gave them this promise. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It is interesting that in all three of these Pentecost images, there is reference to speaking or hearing. They heard the sound. They were given the gift of language to proclaim. Even the flames of fire looked like tongues. This is no accident. The church was born to give witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit gives the church a voice to share the gospel to every generation, even to the ends of the earth. God does not pour out His Spirit to make us a holy huddle. God moves on His church to make us a mighty army. Pentecost gives us the passion to care, the power to speak, and the boldness to move out. Pentecost is what purifies us, sets our hearts on fire, and enables us to communicate the unquenchable love of God and the restoration of all things through Jesus, who is making all things new. Not even a global pandemic can prevent the purpose of Pentecost from being fulfilled. Let us be a church on mission, empowered by the promise of the Father, purified by the sanctifying spirit, and boldly proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's a blessing to me to know that we are a part of a church that has a worldwide impact. We are a very mission-minded church. You'll see that in the, the faces of our, our general superintendents. Half of them are from international areas around the world. I believe the impact of our church and not just us, but the whole church of Jesus Christ is to make a difference in this world, to bring in the harvest. Time, <clears throat> time is ticking away. It's time to wake up and it's time to forget about religious games and start to mean business for God. John four verse 35 says, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. What does that mean that the, the fields are white for harvest? To me, that means the hus on, those, on the, 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 those kernels of grain are already lightening up. They're loosening up from their, those pieces of grain and it won't be long. A little wind, a strong rain, and those pieces of grain will be dislodged out of those shells and lost. Souls are hanging in the balance. We must get busy about God's work in this world. And how will we do that? Through the power of Pentecost. Acts 1.8 says, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, or witnesses to me, in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. We must have the power of the Holy Spirit today, for we are living in the last days. 
the latter days started when Jesus left this world and released the Holy Spirit. We've been living in the latter days for 2,000 years. So the time is drawing short. Every day we live, we are brought one day closer to the end of time and of judgment, toward judgment. 2 Timothy 3 says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Paul's instruction for Timothy was, and from such, turn away. Samson in the Old Testament. Wow. Is the church of today kind of like Samson of old? Not knowing that the Spirit of God had left them? Samson laid his head in Delilah's lap. He lost his power with God and could do nothing but live a defeated life. He was blind, he was bound, he was grinding in circles at his enemy's mill. Religious tradition robs people and churches of the power of God and leaves them grind, grinding at toilsome tasks in weakness and defeat. They are blinded by the devil, bound up in religion. Worst thing is they don't even know it. What we need today is a new day of restoration, a new day of the Holy Spirit filling us up and empowering us, purifying us, and transforming us into those strong witnesses for God. God has restoring power available for the church of Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit. Three, three types of power that I wanna focus on here for just a moment. The first is worshiping power. The Holy Spirit will help us to worship God in spirit and in truth. John 4 says, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and, and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The chief aim, I believe, of man is to worship God. Real worship demands participation. The Holy Spirit will help you and me to worship him in the spirit. He'll help to lift us up. He'll lift up our souls and touch God heart to heart. Isn't that what we need? Isn't that what you long for? A heart to heart experience with God Almighty, to be able to worship him. Oh, I feel like at times we're just very bound up. Even when we gather together in this building, we sit here and we, we listen to the songs. But do we really worship while we're here? Worship him in spirit and in truth. It's got to be active. There's got to be more to it than just showing up. The Holy Spirit gives us worshiping power. He also gives us warring power. Warring power. The Holy Spirit will help you fight against the enemy and be victorious. Ephesians 6 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having that all to stand. Do you stand for God? Do you stand with God? The Holy Spirit is your armor and he is your power to be, to be more than conquerors. Romans 8, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, helping you be victorious for him, with him, in him? And then the third power, witnessing power. Back again to Acts 1.8. But you, will, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall, shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. What is this power to witness? To witness what? It's not about us witnessing something happening around us. It's us being a, a witness of something that's happened in us power to be a witness warning people of the dangers of hell and of the lake of fire. Folks, there is a lake of fire and there is a, absolutely a hell. And it's a place where unbelievers, those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, where they will be cast for eternity. Do we care? Have we been filled with a, a love for the lost that gets past our own timidness and shame, where we will step forward and, and allow somebody else to know the reality that has happened in our heart. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, there, there will be a holy drive within you to point people to Christ so that they can be delivered and set free. What are you willing to do to help somebody not experience eternal hell. I heard the story of a, a little boy. It was a, a dark and rainy night and he was sitting on the side of the, the road and something had happened to his, his mother there in the house just several yards away and he couldn't get anybody's attention. Cars were going by and he would, he'd be on his feet and just kind of waving and people just buzz right past. And finally he, he picked up a rock and threw it as hard as he could at the next car that went by and it broke a window. <laughs> that person stopped. He was able to get help for his mother. What are we willing to do to get help for people? Not to be destructive, that's not what I mean. But what will we do to get people's attention? Have you experienced Pentecost? In Acts 2.38, Peter said, the promise is unto you. If you're a Christian, if you're saved, the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you. Jesus is God's special gift for the sinner. John 3.16 says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you need salvation today? Ask Jesus to come in and save you and forgive your sins. What a wonderful gift that is. And the Holy Spirit is God's special gift for the Christian. Jesus said in Luke eleven thirteen, 13, 
how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Receiving Jesus as Savior will give you the privilege to become a a child of God. Receiving the Holy Spirit as Lord will give you the power to serve Christ by being his anointed witness. Please, don't be satisfied in your spiritual life until you have this experience, until you have this life to live out with purpose and power. Jesus tells us that this power comes through prayer. Again in Luke 11, starting verse nine. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? For us to experience this anointing or baptism of the Holy Spirit, we must ask the Father for the Holy Spirit to come in and fill us. In this verse, the the Greek word translated ask is in the present active, actually meaning to ask and keep asking. So we are to ask for the anointing or baptism of the Holy Spirit until the fullness comes. Then we can continually be being filled. This anointing or baptism of the Holy Spirit is not some emotional toy to make us just feel good. No, this is an empowerment for service. And I'll just tell you, this needs to be an ongoing thing. Yes, we need to have a a point in time where we ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us full to overflowing for the very first time. And it's an exciting time. It's a wonderful time. But through our lives, living for God and serving Him, oh boy, in the middle of service, meeting meeting the needs of others and trying to win others to the Lord, we, we must have fresh infillings of the Holy Spirit. So maybe you know what this means and you've, you have experienced this in the past. But I wonder, are you, are you as fired up today about him as you were back then? Dalton just sang that song a little bit ago, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to be in us. He will only be that when we open up and surrender. Surrender completely to him.
find me Lord as you draw this scripture in but uh, you can look it up Matthew chapter 5 I preached on uh, the Sermon on the Mount some time ago and I said back then that I believe the whole, the, the whole Sermon on the Mount is about holiness it's about living out this life of God in us and the very first thing that we read in the Sermon on the Mount is the Beatitudes. It's in chapter 5, starting verse 3, where it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Listen to this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst 
for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We need to live this blessed life. We need the the Holy Spirit in us, empowering us for this to be fulfilled. It won't happen any other way. You can't just do it by your own self-will or your own determination. It won't happen. You'll fumble, you'll fail, you'll fall flat on your face, and you'll make a bad example. You have to have the Holy Spirit. I encourage you again today, ask him. Verbally, ask him to come in and fill you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much. Here on this birthday of the church, Pentecost Sunday, I'm praying, Lord, that here in this day, something new would happen in our lives. Lord, something dynamically happened in those disciples back 2,000 years ago. They're in that upper room. There was life transforming. They went from cowering behind locked doors to being bold witnesses for Christ out in the streets. Lord, help us. Help us to be completely transformed by the filling of your Holy Spirit. Lord, cleanse our hearts of their old nature of sin and purify us completely. Oh, Lord, thank you for what you can do in that. And then then bring the power, Lord. Bring the power in our lives to, to, to walk victoriously with you. Lord, that our lives would be a witness in our example, as well as in our speech. And Lord, pressed forward by the Holy Spirit, Lord, help us to make a difference in this world of sin. Lord, you have called us to be light in the world of darkness. Lord, we must go forth only with your, with your direction and with your power. And then, Lord, there will be impact and there will be effect. There will be lasting influence. Lord, that's what we're looking for. People to enjoy heaven together with us for eternity. Thank you so much. I'm praying your blessing upon everyone that's hearing this today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you.